Hello, today I'm going to show you how to install Arch Linux in the virtual box setting. Before we begin, it's good to know what type of CPU you're going to be using along with the speed, the RAM, the keyboard layout, and language. Possibly a mouse if you, per if you decide to use a graphical user interface hard disk size and the partition and what type of settings this could be, whether it's going to be a SCSI or a SATA or anything else. Along with the network card you're going to be using, let's begin. Just so you know, I don't have a UEFI virtual machine, so I'm going to be using the old MBR type boot style. I don't have a UEFI motherboard, and if you find this out, I would type in ls forward slash sys firmware EFI EFI bars and hit enter. And as you can see, there's nothing in that folder. Now I'm going to set the keyboard. I'm going to use the command local. ECTL and hit enter. As you can see, the system local is set to English United States, the U2EF. That should be fine if you're comfortable with the United States. However, you can also switch the key map to match your keyboard layout if you're not using the QWERTY type standard. Right now I'm going to test for internet connection because I'm going to have to install through the net to get the latest updates. But to be sure that I'm connected to the internet, I'm going to have to type, use a ping command. You're going to type in ping space slash c space 3 and you type in google.com. As you can see, I have an active ping and an active connection. Right now, I'm going to set the system clock. I'm going to type in t i m e d a t e c t l space s e t hyphen n t p space T-R-U-E and hit enter. This is a daemon that is used for synchronizing the system clock across the network. This is mostly used when you want to make sure you're accurate. To check the clock service, we type in T-I-M-E-D-A-T-E-C-T-L status. As we can see, it's pretty much accurate. As we can see, it's on network time and it's synchronized. As you notice, we don't have a time zone designated. We'll fix that later. Right now, we are going to list what type of hard drive space we have available to the system. We are going to use the ls block command. It's lsblk and hit enter. This lists information about all available or the specified block devices available to the system. The list block command reads the sys file system and the udev db to gather information about the system. Drives. This lists information about all available or the specified block devices on the system. As you notice, we have a floppy drive, a SATA, and a loop. You will most likely see an STA as opposed to HDA device depending on your virtual machine settings. SDA means it's a SCSI block type device as opposed to an HDA device, which is a hard disk, old mechanical, which could be an IDE or serial ATA. Now we see what hard disks are available. We can install to the one we choose. However, we're going to choose to install to the SDA hard disk. We are going to type in cfdisk space forward slash dev forward slash SDA because we want to create a partition on this drive space. When you execute cfdisk, you're going to be asked to select what label type. It's best to select GPT for now. Currently, I have 12 gigabytes of free space, and I'm going to save one gig as a um, partition for swap. So right now, I'm going to go to new. I'm going to hit type in 11 gigabytes, and now I'm going to hit the down arrow key, select free space again, and I'm going to create new, and then I'm going to hit enter again because it already has a default to what's left or the remaining partition space. And now I'm going to change the type of the. SDA2, 
I'm going to make sure it's selected by making sure it's highlighted by using the arrow keys. Hit type. And I'm going to hit select Linux swap. And when I'm done and ready, I'm going to hit right. Now I had to type in yes. I hit yes. And it's already written. And the partition table has been written and altered. This is what you pretty much want. So I'm done. I'm going to hit select quit. As you can see, I created two partitions on the SCSI drive. The first one would be the file system, which would hold all the Linux system files and boot drive. And the STA2 is the Linux swap space. Once a partition is created, each partition must be formatted with an appropriate file system, except for the swap partition, which will turn into a swap file. I'm going to format SDA1 into a extension 4 type file system. I'm going to type in mkfs period ext4 space 4 slash dev sda1. As you can see, that completed pretty fast. Next, I'm going to mount sda1. In case you're wondering what mount is, mounting is the process of associating a partition to a directory. We're associating the device file sda1 to the directory of forward slash mnt. So we're going to type in mount space forward slash dev forward slash sda1 space forward slash mnt. We have successfully mounted the device file to the folder mnt. We will now mount the swap file. Instead, of using the mount command, we would use the mkswap command. The command is mkswap space or slash dev or slash sda2 and and we have successfully turned the partition into a swap file. We will now turn on the swap file by using the swap on command. swap on or slash dev or slash sda2 and the swap file has been successfully turned on. Now we will install Arch Linux using Packstrap. We will use Packstrap to install Linux using the Packstrap command. I will now type in the command P A C S T R A P four slash M N T space B A S E space B A S E hyphen D E V L E if you want, you can put a hyphen i in front of the m and t and we'll ask you to install each package individually, but there's over 144 questions you will have to answer yes or no to. This is more of an express way to install it. It'll take around 20 minutes to an hour depending how fast your internet connection speed is. And away we go! Now we're going to turn in the fstaff file. We're going to type in genfstab space forward slash mnt greater than signs two of them space forward slash mnt space space mnt forward slash etc forward slash F S T A B. This creates a file and which is used to specify which file systems to mount automatically at boot time. We will now change root with the arch command. It is A R C H hyphen C H R O O T space four slash M N T space M B I N for slash B A S H and hit enter. Now I'm going to set the region to the location of the computer. I'm going to use nano. However, you can use whatever text editor you like to use. I'm going to type N A N O space for slash E T C for slash L O C A L E gen. And we'll scroll down rather page down to the language I'm looking for, which is English, the United States.
then we'll delete the pound symbol in front of each language that I want the computer support. Then I will save it with Control O, hit Enter, and Control X to exit out of the Nano. Now we'll generate the locales file by typing in L O C A L E hyphen G E N. Enter. Generation complete. We'll now set the time zone for the computer using the time zone select command or type in T Z S E L E C T. Hit enter. Since I'm near the Pacific Ocean, I will hit in 10 as a command. And we'll hit 25 for the United States. We'll hit 21 for Pacific time. And we'll hit 1 for yes. Now I'm going to create a symbolic link to a file called local time in the Etsy directory. To see what time zones you have available to create this symbolic link, you can type in cd space for slash usr for slash share for slash zoneinfo for slash and hit enter. You can ls the directory, typing ls and hit enter. And then you can type see your and now you can see the country you're in. You could type in CD US Enter and LS. Since I want to create a symbolic thing from the Pacific into the SE directory, or I type in LN space hyphen S space four slash USR four slash S H A R E four slash Z O N E I N F O four slash Zone was the US for slash and now it's specific space for slash ATC for slash local time. I know how to set the hardware clock by typing HW space hyphen hyphen SYS THC space hyphen hyphen UTC. Now we'll have to create hooks to all most of the components to the operating system. What we'll happened M K I N I T C P I O space hyphen P space L I N U X and hit enter. Now I'm going to install a bootloader for the system. I'm going to install Grub, but you can install whatever bootloader you like. I'm going to type Hackman space minus G U B hyphen B I O S and it's installing from the internet. And I would like to hit yes. Grub is successfully installed. Now it's time to execute it and install it. I'm going to type G R U B hyphen I N S T A L L space four slash D E V four slash S D A. As you can see, I had an error. It says will not proceed with block list. However, I can actually force it onto the system. In front of the DEV, I would type in two hyphens and type in the word force and space and hit enter. As you can see, it has successfully installed it with no error reporting. Now I need to create an image for the grub to boot from. I will type in G U R B hyphen M K C O N F I G space O four slash B O O T B U G G U R B G U R B period C F G. 
Now that's done, however, I need to create a fallback image to in case anything happens to the main partition. Instead, I'm going to type in the same thing. Instead, I'm going to call this one I N I T R A M F S hyphen Linux hyphen fallback period IMG. As of right now, I'm going to create a host name for the computer. I'm going to type in echo and whatever the name I want to name the computer. However, I'm going to just type in a VBox for a virtual box machine. I'm going to type in greater than space etc space not space or slash host name and hit enter. Now we're pretty much complete. Now we just need to type in a pass WD and hit enter because we need to create a password for the administrator account we're in. You can name whatever password you want, but you should always remember it. Successfully updated. Now we just need to reboot. You don't need to re unmount most of the partitions because when you reboot, it's mostly going to do it for you, but you can do it just to be safe. Type in the U M O N T base hyphen capital R or slash M T. You can see it's already unmounted. Now we just need to reboot the system, but we need to exit out of the administrator account, so we're going to type in exit. Now if we type in reboot. You can see the computer has rebooted. And we're logging into our root account. And the password created. And now you have a working partition. Just in case you don't get it up and running on the first time, there's really good explanations on their forums. You should always check them out because there's a lot of computers and each computer has different configurations and hardware settings, so you may have to look for the right one for you or ask around. We're not going to ping if I have internet connection. Oh no, I don't have any network connection. Every now and then you will have this error come up to you. The best way to fix this, so it's a quick fix, is to cd for slash space this class. In case you don't have an internet connection working, you may have to type in DHCP CD. If that doesn't work, you may have to do a CD base forward slash SYS forward slash CLASS forward slash NNT and type in DIR and you're going to notice two things the name of your network adapter and the LO ignore the LO and what you're going to type in is DHCP CD in, a, in my case ENS33 and hit enter and this is to send a signal to start up the network card I have listed I'm going to do another ping to make sure I have interconnection. And lo and behold, it's already set up. I hope this installation guide helps you, or in case you have any questions, just let me know. I'll do my best to answer your questions. Till next time, see you later.